Welcome to Cerner Hacks. In this episode, we're going to talk about the patient overview and how it can be useful for you when you're doing rounds. And so here's our patient list with the illness severity showing us how urgently we need to see the patient, their location, any actions that we need to take, any results that are pending, current diagnosis, chronic problems, and any notifications such as expiring medications. So stay tuned and we'll show you how this all works. <laughs> Welcome to this episode of Sonar Hacks. So today we'll be talking about the patient overview, which lives over here in the top menu bar uh, under patient overview. First, you have to build a list in the patient list function. Here we have a personalized list of my patients here today. To select the patient overview, go into here and click on this button where we will find our patient list. Initially, you may be defaulted to the care team list. To find your personal list, you'll have to go to the patient list here and here we are. You double click and this will show up. So let's review the screen in a bit more detail. So we can choose our columns by going to sandwich bar here and layout configuration. Here we see the things that are available to us. Patient information, which is over here. It gives you the patient's name and their date of birth. Next is illness severity. And here we can check off that the patient's stable or sick. Next is location and we'll want that in our column. Primary contact I find is not very useful. We'll uncheck this. Actions pulls in from the team communications, so we'll want to keep that open. New results shows you any results that haven't been viewed by a provider yet. Medication history, we will uncheck this. This will tell you that BPMH is done, but it's not a very useful column. Diagnosis will give you the current diagnosis. This unfortunately will only show you the first two or three diagnoses. So if there's more active diagnosis, it won't show. Same thing with product problems, it only populates the first two. You can decide yourself whether or not this is useful or not. We'll leave it in for now so you can see. The next thing you want is notifications. This will tell you if there's any vacations about to be hard stopped. Next is high risk. I don't think this is very useful, so we'll uncheck this. Isolation is any isolation precautions. Resuscitation will reveal the code status of the patient, but I find that not very useful because the icons are so small, it's hard to see. Diet, obviously we did uncheck that. Visits, patient contact, I'd leave this out. We will uncheck COVID because that's not here very useful for me. And then the EGA as well. So those are the columns that I would pre-select and we can apply. And now you've got a little bit of a cleaner screen. So you see now that all of this is hashed out and you can't see any patient information here yet. And that's because we haven't established a relationship with these patients yet. So to do that, we hit establish relationship we will select a consulting provider relationship. Then we select all the patients on this list and submit. And now you can see that all that dithered out material is now viewable. And because we're in a training environment, we're seeing a pretty empty screen here. We can resize these windows a little bit to show you more information about where the patient is, to show you the full patient's name as well as date of birth. Illness severity is where we assign patients a stability factor. So you can see how go from unstable, watch stable, or discharging if they're close to going home. Click unstable and it'll show you the illness severity here. This is the patient location. The actions area is pulled in from the team communications actions items. And so the top two will be selected and show up in here. If there's more than two actions, it'll just show the first two. New results will flag you new results. If there's new lab reports, it'll show in here. Diagnosis will show you current active issues on this patient. And because we're in a training environment, there are no active issues on any of these patients. And chronic problems are the past medical history. And again, it only shows you the first two. I believe you click on this, it'll show you anything more. So there was one further issue that wasn't seen. So when we click on that, we see the three issues that are chronic for this patient. And these are notifications. So for example, this was expiring order of and that's about to expire. So you can click on this and it'll say the stop date is coming up. So the next thing that's useful in this patient overview is if we click into the white blank area, we can pull up something called the iPass view, which is this thing here. It gives you a bit more information before rounding on the patient and going to the ward. So if you wanna go through one patient at a time in the morning, this iPass view will give you a patient summary, any current actions, and I believe this action menu will give you all the pending actions coming up, not just the first two that's seen in here. It'll also pull in the situational awareness and planning section of your team communications in this box, which is not available in the patient list view. 
Once you're done reviewing, you can also review patient's clinical data, which includes the current vital signs and lab work. So here we can see at a quick glance what the current vitals are. And as we scroll down, we can see current lab work and current medications, ins and outs. So that can be very useful. And if you happen to be in a care team, you can change care teams and add patient to care teams. The last thing that's useful in the patient overview is the print button. And it's not very obvious here, but you can actually print from this list. So what you have to do first is select all patients in this list. And now the print button shows up, which isn't all that intuitive. When we click on print, we can print a simplified list. And I'll show you what that looks like. It'll print up the patient handoff tool and it'll pull in the illness severity diagnosis, the code status, and the admit date. So this printable list may or may not be helpful to you. You can decide yourself. The other thing we can do here is print the detailed list. And the detailed list gives you quite a bit more information, but depending on your facility, this might be a very long multi-page document. It gives you the scheduled medications, allergies, patient summary, and the diagnosis. It'll also give you the situational awareness and planning and the actions here. So you can try that out and see if it works for your site. And of course, you can go directly into the patient's chart by clicking the patient's name directly. So it's three sides of the window. And here you can see the whole entire patient's chart that you have entered from the patient overview section. So in the end, the patient overview section can be used. I filled out a few more squares here so you can see how it can be useful to you. So you can see a few actions that have been recommended by the nurses. If you have the new results icon showing here, what you can do is click in here and here will bring up the links to go right into the launch results review for this patient. And then right here is where you go to results review. Once you've scrolled through and reviewed all the new results, you can now click this eyeball here. It's called bookmark. And when you click on that and refresh, you'll be able to see that eyeball is now dithered out and there's no new results. And that's in the results review section. So we'll close the chart and the rest is self-explanatory. So that's how you navigate to the patient overview. And so hopefully that's been helpful for you. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time on Sooner Hacks.